Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And today, ensuing the incredibly exciting news that I discussed yesterday, how we may receive our first iOS 10 jailbreak in the form of an iOS 10.1.1 utility, so an older firmware. Definitely check out that video if you have yet to, to know what I'm talking about. It's linked in your cards as well as down below in the description. I'm going to show you guys how to downgrade iOS 10.2 or even 10.2.1 beta back to iOS 10.1.1 in the hopes of potentially being able to jailbreak. So if you want to greatly improve your probability of being able to jailbreak, I definitely recommend downgrading while you still can because it won't last forever and this tutorial won't be relevant once Apple stops signing iOS 10.1.1. That's of paramount importance. Now, in this downgrade tutorial, I'm also going to show you guys how to maintain the vast majority of your data. The only data that is susceptible to potential loss would be text messages and non-iCloud based notes, as well as contacts if not backed up inside of iCloud, though chances are good the majority of you have your contacts saved in iCloud. Now, the reason for this is simply because Apple blocks backup resources that were created on a higher firmware. So if you plugged your device into your computer and it's on iOS 10.2 or 10.2.1 and you try to back it up and then downgrade and restore from your backup, you simply won't be able to do that because again, iTunes blocks backups created on higher firmwares. One other thing I want to mention before I continue, this will also work if you are upgrading from a lower firmware and you're not not trying to downgrade from 10.2 or 10.2.1. So for instance, say you're on 10.0.x, you can still update to 10.1.1 again, as long as Apple is still signing it. And to do so without losing your data, just follow the exact same steps found in this tutorial. Now, if you happen to watch this video on a mobile device, definitely pick it up on a desktop because I am going to add some old school desktop annotations that will be your first clue as to whether Apple is still signing iOS 10.1.1 or not. If there's a green annotation stating that they are, then good to go. You'll be able to continue with this tutorial. If there's a red annotation stating that they've stopped signing it, unfortunately, you've missed the downgrade window because of course you can only restore or in this case downgrade to firmwares that Apple is still signing. There are a number of verification checkpoints that occur every single time you try to restore or downgrade a device inside of iTunes and if it fails the one where it checks against Apple's remote servers that again state which firmwares you can actually restore or downgrade to then guess what you won't be able to do it. It's as simple as that. If Apple's not signing it you can't go back to it. As of recording this video though of course they definitely still are. Be sure to check the annotations though if you're watching this at a later date. Now you're only going to need a few things to actually proceed. First and foremost, the latest version of iTunes. So if you have yet to download it in a while, you're going to need to grab it, go to iTunes.com in your browser of choice, and you can update that way. Next, you're going to need your device's corresponding iOS 10.1.1 IPSW. Now an IPSW is a firmware restore file essentially, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to grab it. But just note that if you are downgrading with the potential hope of being able to jailbreak, you're going to have to grab the first build of iOS 10.1.1 because Apple did issue a secondary iOS 10.1.1 build and the individual at Google's Project Zero who actually published the technical jailbreak of sorts that I discussed yesterday claims that he's only tested it on the first build of iOS 10.1.1 and your best bet would be to again downgrade to that specific firmware. So what you're going to do is go to the link that's down below in the description. It will be a full written tutorial so you'll be able to go over absolutely everything I say in this video in a written format and it's also going to have this link right here which you're going to use to obtain your device's specific IPSW. So once you're at this screen you're just going to pick your specific device. Now I have an iPod touch so I'm just going to click on iPod touch. If you have an iPhone or an iPad of course you're going to click on the one that does correspond to your device. So we're clicking on iPod right here and then from there it's going to ask you which model iPod touch 6 or 6 gen and this is the absolute key thing that you're going to have to do right here, you need to download the older build of iOS 10.1.1, that's 14B100. Let me actually zoom in so you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, so see that right here, how there are two builds of iOS 10.1.1? You don't want to download the 14B150 version, you just want 14B100, and there are no noticeable or outward facing changes 
changes or differences at all between these two firmwares. Just the fact that the developer of this technical jailbreak has only tested it on 14B100. So the older iteration, you're going to have to grab that one. Also, this is another or a secondary chance for you guys to see whether Apple is still signing iOS 10.1.1 or not. If they're not, it's going to be red and it's going to be under the unsigned IPSWs section. So just note that if it is still undersigned and it's green, you are good to proceed. And of course, like I said previously, the annotation toward the beginning of this video will also alert you as to whether it's still being signed. So once you grab it, again, all you have to do to grab it is just click on it and then click download. You can actually continue. Now, I also wanted to say briefly, this goes for those of you who have iPhones that you need to obtain the correct or the corresponding IPSW for your device. So let me go ahead and click on iPhone and show you guys exactly what I mean. If iTunes actually throws up any sort of an error stating that your device does not correspond to the firmware that you've actually downloaded, it's because you've downloaded the wrong one. So for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, for instance, you have the option between GSM or Global. Here in the United States, you're going to pick GSM if you have a GSM-based carrier. You're going to pick Global if you have a carrier that is CDMA-based. So. Here in the US, again, AT&T and T-Mobile are the two big GSM carriers, whereas Sprint and Verizon are the two CDMA carriers that you're going to pick global. Also, if you're outside of the US, you're going to want to pick global as well. If you download one and it's just not working for you, just try the other one. It's really as simple as that. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed now that we have the correct IPSW downloaded for our device here. This is the 14B100 build. What we need to do at this point is just connect our device to our computer via a standard USB cable. So I have my USB cable here and we're just going to connect. Now, I also wanted to show you guys that of course I am actually running iOS 10.2.1, so you definitely know that this will also function on iOS 10.2. We are on the latest beta of 10.2.1 that Apple actually ceded to developers earlier this week. So I'm going to launch up the settings application here and then go inside of general followed by about and you will see down below at the bottom for the version that it does corroborate that we are in fact on iOS 10.2.1, 14D10. All right, so let's go ahead and continue now. After you've plugged in, if iTunes doesn't automatically pop up, you're just going to manually open it and you're just going to navigate to your device tab. So I'm here now with my iPod Touch on the iPod Touch overview screen. If it's the first time you're connecting to that specific computer or the first time since you last restored, iTunes may ask you to trust the connection. On your device, it will just prompt you to trust, whereas on the computer, it will ask you to click continue. You need to do both. Once it's done that, it will establish the connection. Let me go ahead and adjust this window here so you guys can see what we're actually doing and I can show you what we're working with. This is actually perfect. We have a close-up view, and again, iTunes does also corroborate that we are, in fact, running iOS 10.2.1. Now, what you're going to want to do is specific to your computer's operating system. What I mean by that is if you are running a Windows-based PC, you're going to hold down the Shift key on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac like I am, you're going to hold down the Option or the Alt key on your keyboard. So Shift for Windows, Option or Alt for Mac. And then you're going to left-click Check for update. Do not left click restore device. Left click on check for update. This is the way that you're going to be able to maintain, again, the vast majority of your data. So after left clicking on check for update, you're going to receive a pop-up window similar to this. You're just going to point it at your IPSW and iTunes will then pop up with a prompt asking you if you're sure you want to update your device and that it's going to verify the update with Apple. So at this point, I'm going to zoom out just so you guys can see exactly what we're doing during the update process, or in this case, Case, of course, the downgrade process. We're essentially tricking iTunes into maintaining the majority of our data because you can technically use its update feature for lower firmware so long as they are still being signed. So even though it says update, again, we're downgrading back from iOS 10.2.1. It's kind of a workaround or a loophole. So at this point, we're just going to click on update and I'm going to bring my iPod touch over so you can see exactly what's happening. By the way, throughout this entire downgrade process, I'm going to leave my iPod 
iPod Touch up on the screen so you guys can see approximately how long each step should take, though it may vary for you based on a few things, such as your device, your computer, and the connection. All right, so we're just going to let this do its thing. It is currently on the extracting software step, and as I said, it will go through a number of verification checkpoints, and so long as you have selected the right IPSW and Apple is still signing iOS 10.1.1, you will be able to successfully downgrade your device back to the firmware. So with that being said, if you want to skip past any of these longer steps, such as actually downgrading and then also the on-device consolidation, down below in the description, there will be a table of contents that will allow you to skip ahead. All right, there we go. It is now preparing the iPod for a software update. The screen has gone black and it's just going to go into recovery mode and then continue on to downgrading the device. All right, now it's actually verifying updated iPod software. This is definitely one of the stages where it actually checks with Apple's remote servers. Again, you should be good to go as long as they are still signing it. I wanna say that enough times so that you guys are definitely made aware of that fact that once Apple stops signing it, a restore or a downgrade is no longer possible. Also, just note that the bar on your device as well as the bar inside of iTunes interface will not match up. The bar on the bottom of your device is reminiscent of the overall or the total downgrade process, whereas the bar that you'll see inside of iTunes just resembles the current step or stage that it's actually on in the downgrade process. So if you're looking for something to kind of gauge how much longer you have left, definitely look to your iDevice because that's what's going to have the total progress. And it's actually onto the updating iPod software stage and then it will move on through a few more verification checkpoints. Let's just let it do its thing. All right, it says verifying updated iPod software. Again, it should just breeze through this portion, no problem. And as you can see, it definitely moved past it. It went to updating iPod software and then verifying iPod software. And there we go. We do have a pop-up that confirms that our iPod touch has been updated, so to speak. As you can see there, it does say that our iPod was updated. It actually went away a little too fast, but now you're pretty much good to go to disconnect your device if you want to. It will now just go through an on-device consolidation step, and it doesn't need to be connected for that because, of course, it is the on-device consolidation. So don't worry if you see a bar beneath the Apple logo. You definitely will, and that's completely fine. All right, so this is what I was talking about. We have another progress bar again. Like I said, you can disconnect your device if you want to, or you can just leave it connected. The choice is up to you. It's done now with the downgrade.
All right, we actually do have a little notification here stating that there is a new version of iOS to restore to iOS 10.2 because that's the latest public firmware as of now. So you definitely know we're on a firmware earlier than that. We're going to prove it though, just inside of settings general about once it comes back up fully. All right, and there we go. I just heard a connection tone and we should be at the lock screen momentarily. As you can see, here we go. Let's go ahead and press the home button to unlock. And now I'm just going to go inside of settings followed by general and then about and down below at the bottom. This time we have iOS 10.1.1. So there you go, guys. We were able to fully and successfully downgrade from iOS 10.2.1 back to 10.1.1. And of course I do have the Pokemon Go application, an app that I obviously previously had on iOS 10.2.1. So you do know that you will be able to maintain your data. This is the proof of that. And of course we are on the lower firmware, the one that will hopefully potentially get a jailbreak. And even if it doesn't and we have a Pangu iOS 10.2 jailbreak before anything comes of the Project Zero iOS 10.1.1 technical jailbreak, guess what? You're not out of anything. At that point, you can update. This just definitely goes to securing your ability to be able to jailbreak for whichever firmware jailbreak is released for. So if you guys appreciated this video and you found it helpful, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. Let me know down below. Also click that subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to, to be fully updated and notified anytime I cover anything related to jailbreaking and or iOS. And for even more frequent updates, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.